Welcome to week two of Life Together. Today we're going to be talking about accountability. It doesn't take long as a parent before you have to start dealing with injuries and care in the line of adventuring. My wife and I have four kids, and our oldest two are full of adventurous spirit. They love to climb trees, swing on branches, and ride their bikes at high speed. And eventually, of course, accidents happen. They slip, they trip, they fall, and they end up with some pretty nasty scrapes and bruises. Now, both of our oldest boys share the same impulse in common in those moments. When they experience pain from a fall, they want to cover up and they want to pull back. They'll cover it up with their hands and they'll yell right at us, don't touch it, I don't want to look at it. And no matter how much their mom or I try to explain that we want to help, we want to clean things up, we want to bandage them up, there's an impulse in them that tells them it's better to keep their wounds away from others, to go it alone. Now I can admire a desire to be tough, but we all have things in our lives that we need help with. Because God did not design us to live in isolation or to pull back from one another. God doesn't want us to hide the parts of our lives where we struggle, but to invite the body of Christ, other Christian believers, into those spaces so that we can find healing and encouragement. And this is why the idea of accountability is so important to a healthy relationship with God and with others. Accountability is the intentional act of inviting others to walk alongside you and speak into your life so that you can grow your faith in Christ and your obedience to Christ. In the New Testament, the Apostle Paul writes a letter to a church in Galatia where he tells them this, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Paul is encouraging the church that Christ's desire for his followers is that they walk together, they share life together. In the Old Testament, in the book of Ecclesiastes, a book full of wisdom for life, we're told in chapter 4, verse 12, though a man might prevail against one who is alone, two will withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. The point of that is to say that shared life is better than life in isolation. Accountability brings strength where we are weak. It allows us to have stability where we would otherwise stumble. I was recently fortunate enough to have a personal trainer give me some uh, lessons. This was a great gift for me because I'm terrible at working out. I don't have good form when I'm lifting weights. I'm not athletic at all. And I don't know which exercises are good for which parts of my body. So having a coach with me helped me overcome a lot of this. They were able to watch me and help me identify weak spots in my workouts. They were able to help me improve my form. They were able to give me encouragement on the things that I was doing well. And that's similar to how accountability works in our lives. It creates relationships in our lives that support and strengthen us in our walk with Christ. Think of some of the areas in your life where you have most wanted to grow in your faith, where you've wanted to see victory over sins that you're struggling with. Trying to overcome them alone is a burden that God does not want you to carry. Accountability is his gift to you to help you grow. In the verse I mentioned a moment ago from Galatians, Paul says that bearing one another's burdens, which is a way that we can understand accountability, fulfills the law of Christ. What's the law of Christ? I think Paul means two possible things here. First, it's an allusion to Christ's summary of all of the law of God. In Mark 12, Christ says that all the law hangs on these two commandments, to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. So it should come as no surprise that bearing one another's burdens fulfills the law of Christ. Because to bear one another's burdens is to love God by loving your neighbor. But secondly, the law of Christ can simply mean that there's a call to put your faith in Christ himself. When we carry one another's burdens and live in accountable relationships, we tangibly demonstrate our faith in Christ by no longer hiding those parts of ourselves that need grace and need healing. The irony is that when we try to tough it out and live without accountability, we're demonstrating a lack of faith because we think that we can do a better job of caring for ourselves than Christ can through his body. Living without accountability means you have more trust in yourself than in Christ. Now, it's easy to persuade ourselves that there's reasons to avoid accountability. We can have fear that if we really share our struggles and our burdens, people will react negatively. They won't want to bear them with us. And so building accountability in your life, though it may be inconvenient or uncomfortable, will actually place you in a position of trust that will allow you to experience what our soul desperately longs for, forgiveness 
acceptance, support and hope. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the famous German pastor and theologian, once wrote in his book, Life Together, a man who confesses his sins in the presence of a brother knows that he is no longer alone with himself. He experiences the presence of God in the reality of the other person. You see, accountability isn't about facing condemnation. It's about discovering consolation. So, how can we practice good accountability? I want to offer you four C's that I think can help us grow in healthy accountability. First one is this, practice complete accountability. First John 1 8 says, if we say we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves. The truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and righteous to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We will always be tempted to practice partial accountability. We'll reveal the parts of ourselves that are safest, or we'll select specific areas of accountability and keep certain areas of our lives private. We'll seek accountability in our personal spiritual life, but not in our marriages or parenting. We might seek accountability in our commitment to church or Bible study, but not in our financial life or our behavior in the workplace. Healthy accountability wants to bring up the things that are most critical to our growth in Christ across every area of our life. Secondly, practice consistent accountability. Hebrews 10, 24 and 25 says, let us consider how to stir one another up to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. See, true accountability isn't seasonal, it's regular. We don't put it into practice only in the worst moments when things have unraveled. We practice it even when things are going well because consistent accountability helps us to see our sins and our struggles and especially the ones that might be hidden from us that exist in our blind spots. It allows people to really get to know you to understand what your struggles are and what you're prone to, to help you examine yourself thoughtfully. Thirdly, practice compassionate accountability. Galatians 6.1 says, Brothers and sisters, if someone is overtaken in any wrongdoing, you who are spiritual should restore such a person with a gentle spirit, watching out for yourself so that you also won't be tempted. Good accountability isn't just about what you share with others, It's about how you receive what is shared with you. Remember, healthy accountability moves in two directions. And bearing one another's burdens means being willing to carry others' struggles with them. When others choose to share their sin and their struggles with you, you are acting as a representative of Christ in that moment. And even when accountability calls for us to give difficult words of correction or challenge, we must be careful not to respond flippantly or ungraciously. God's desire is always for restoration and reconciliation, even in our worst failings. And your responsibility is to help others see that truth when they are accountable with you. And lastly, and most importantly, practice confident accountability. Romans 8.1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And at the close of that same chapter in verses 38 and 39, Paul writes, I'm sure that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The bedrock of healthy accountability is a confidence that the God who called you is faithful and that nothing you're struggling with will ever convince him to turn his back on you. We need to remind ourselves of that when we are accountable to others And we need to remind others of that when they're accountable to us. This is the central declaration of the gospel. Again and again, the Bible affirms for us that God has seen us at our worst and there is nothing that happens to us or that we choose to do that surprises him. And that means that we should walk into any accountability relationship knowing God has good for us and will do good work in us if we invite him to. So let me close by asking you this. Are you living in accountability or are you holding back? Are you inviting the body of Christ to come in close to help you bear your burdens or are you trying to shoulder them alone? Are you making yourself available to carry others' burdens with them or are you standing at a distance? 
God's desire for you to thrive in your faith means that he is inviting you to intentionally invite others to walk alongside you and speak into your life so that you can grow your faith in Christ and your obedience to Christ. Accountability is a gift. Don't leave that gift unopened in your life.